Here's part two, fixing the ice maker. Now I've gone ahead and I popped this little gear off of its shaft and there really wasn't much to that. It just kind of gently levered up and off of there with a little bit of help from ye old friendly 15-in-1 screwdriver which is even patented. That's how good it is. Anyway, I have some super glue right here. I have the rubbing alcohol over here and I even managed to find the cotton swabs which means I've pretty much impressed myself enough this week and I'm just going to have to spend the rest of the week asleep. So, first thing that I need to do to try and repair this gear is to go ahead and clean any grease or uh, grime that might be on this shaft off of there and do the same for the gear because if I don't do that then our lovely bottle of instant crazy glue won't set up properly and all this work will be in vain. And given how little work I try to do the more of it that's productive, the better it'll be. Everything's been cleaned up now. A little bit of a precautionary notice about working with super glue. You're only going to have one chance to get this right because diamonds are forever and so super glue. As anyone who's ever glued some of their appendages together by accident can definitely tell you. I'm kind of surprised that this little drive shaft here has splines on it. It appears that they're stripped out of the gear though. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this gear up with some super glue, making sure not to uh, glue the motor shaft so it won't work at all. And then I'll give it a couple moments to set up and put this thing back in the freezer and see if it works. There it is, all back together again. And if I play with this drive gear over here, well, this driven gear actually, this is the drive gear, you can see that it's definitely a lot better than it was, a lot less slop in that mechanism. Now YouTube user the Tech Knight sent me a message, uh, left a comment on my video actually saying that he wondered if maybe the um, water, the water valve solenoid was bad and I forgot to mention that in my previous video because it would be an important thing to check. But as this thing was failing full of uh, made ice cubes, I don't think that the solenoid is to blame. It seems to work properly and I did try jumping it and I got water coming out into the freezer compartment into a bowl that I had set up without failure. So I think that the water solenoid can be said to be okay. I'll go ahead and I'll just carefully drive this thing through a cycle here. You can hear me turning it. You can see the ejector blades start to go. And again, if you do this yourself, the key word here is to go slowly. Don't force anything. This is a fragile mechanism. You might be able to hear the little noise that the gear train and the gearbox and the synchronous motor are making. Get back here. If you ever wondered how one of these things work, this is basically it. Its brain consists entirely of switches and that timing motor. All right, now it's actually scooping up. If there were ice cubes in there, it would be scooping them up and getting ready to dump them into the ice tray, which makes a very definite characteristic and easily recognizable noise. There it is. One complete ice making cycle. I've got the fridge refrigerator uh, unplugged, turned off, so everything here should be pretty neutral to work on. Putting this thing back into place is not too hard. Basically you hook the uh, little supports, these little metal brackets here, over these screws and then you would tighten them down but it's very important that you make sure you get the power cord plugged in and also that the water tube is going into the ice maker and not behind it so that you don't flood your freezer and cause it to drip down into the refrigeration compartment or even potentially short out the defrosting heater and there's the electrical connection that's been remade now just to make sure that this water pipe gets guided into the right place and to hang the thing up and then I'll plug the freezer and refrigerator back in and see what happens. Some helpful key keeper filled our bucket with ice, but this thing should still run because that arm won't catch any of that ice and make it think that the ice tray is full and shut it off. 
So now I should just have to plug this thing back in, let it cool down for a little bit, let this lever down and just see if it'll go ahead and run through a cycle. Tell you what, that key keeper, he leaves his car parts laying everywhere. If I'm not careful, we may end up with a car in the kitchen. <laughs> Now, if it only took you a couple minutes to put your ice maker back in, if you did it faster than I did, which you probably did because you're not trying to make a video, give your refrigerator's cooling system some time to uh, allow the pressures to equalize. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard on the compressor when you attempt to start it up. Now, this thing's had a couple minutes to rest. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on here, set it to about where it was, and it should start within a minute or two. And there it is, although it's shut off, it's returning its tines to the home position. You just barely see it turn. Guess it wasn't happy with where I put them. You can hear that little motor coming under load now. It's probably right where that gear started to fail. But I don't think there's a problem elsewhere in the mechanism, I just think that's the way it happens to be. Okay, it just filled itself with water. I've returned it to the run position. Now the little motor has shut off and it's going to sleep for a little while, probably an hour or two, until it's had a chance to freeze all that water into ice cubes. At which point, hopefully, it will eject them into the ice tray. That's the part that's going to take some time to determine because this thing doesn't exactly work quickly and sometimes this thing could go for several days if not a week between failures which is never much fun to try and troubleshoot I tell you what we're all pretty hard up for entertainment here because we're all standing around the refrigerator waiting for it to finish making ice <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? two things the night we got a new washing machine and the day my 17 belt book on the big old piece of junk <laughs> Oh, and we can't forget the time we got the new washer, too. That's what I said. Oh, the coffee maker, the Farberware coffee, coffee maker. maker. Yeah, right. yeah, when our mother brought that up, and we all had an insane interest in watching it operate, which led to the inside joke and comment, uh, let's make coffee! <laughs> it's been a long time since I said that. Now, for anybody wondering, it seems to take this thing about an hour to actually make ice. Now, here it is getting ready to run the cube eject cycle. You can see the tines going around there. I didn't quite catch it at the right time. So you can see that thing just slowly turning. It sleeps until a thermostat tells it that the ice cubes have been successfully made. Now that screw up top with the plus and minus marks next to it is a fill level setting if you're not getting quite enough water into the unit like you might not if you have bad water pressure but now you can hear that motor come under more load I wonder if the mold heater's working like it ought to get ready see the ice cubes come out back there Gravity's going to take over. Woo! And then it'll cycle around. It'll fill itself with water again. It'll make more ice.
when the water fill process starts, which you might just be able to see happening, and it shuts off, and the cycle repeats itself once again. <clears throat> so there you have it. Only time will tell if it's really fixed for sure, but at least in the outset, it's looking promising. So put this cover back on here and just see how it does over the coming days.